Chief Sammy Tayakwai says one of the benefits of his marriages is that the burden of chores is shared. And most of the time, their union is harmonious because each of his wives had a say in the newcomer. It's important to be part of the negotiation because the land has to be divided again and I have to make sure that the next one is willing to help with all the chores. Polygamy is about bringing whole families together. He consulted his wife's parents first. You don't just go and pick him because you want, you want more than one. You go there, you pick one, you go to that corner. No, yeah, there is a system to follow. Kenya's parliament has just passed a bill that legalizes polygamy. It means all so-called customary unions should have a marriage certificate as legal proof. But it also allows a man to marry again without his existing wife's consent. The new bill has huge implications for women in customary marriages. If their husbands can marry again without their consent, effectively the wife has no control over how thinly her family's income and resources are spread. But supporters of the bill argue it covers all Kenyans and raises the status of women, whether they're married in a church or a mosque, in a customary or a civil union. It's all of them. The bill protects all of them. I'm saying it because it is the women who are complaining. But otherwise, men are not complaining. These, these people are only one-sided. Wanjika Mohia is one of the MPs who walked out of parliament during the debate. After all, we are all elected by all genders. So as a woman member, I should not make a law that disadvantage men and equally we demanded as men, regardless of their tyranny, they should not make law that disadvantage the women. The marriage bill has led to fierce debate over the balance between equal rights, customary practices and their modern interpretations. It still needs to be signed by President Uhuru Kenyatta before it becomes law. Tanya Page, Al Jazeera, Narok, Kenya.